Tupac's father finally understands that Reggie Wright Jr. betrayed his son. Let's get into some of this straight game. Life is like a of cards. It's not what you dealt with, but how you play it. Remember they used to laugh at a brother Welcome back guys, welcome back It's your boy Delray Richardson, Platinum Artist, Platinum Songwriter, Straight Game TV uh, Thank you for tuning in, I appreciate your time Do me a favor, uh, hit the thumbs up button Also subscribe to the channel if you have not already And like I always say, if you want to be one of the first people notified when I drop some of this Straight Game uh, Please do me a favor and click on what appears to be that little bell notification right below this video I'm going to get right into it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think um, Tupac's father, uh, Mr. Garland, is finally understanding uh, some of the things that I've been saying in regards to the Tupac and the death of his son. You know, I don't try to force anything on anybody, but like I said, through conversation and dialogue, there's some things I understood about some things that I didn't know that he taught me. Um, as well as some of the things that I've not really um, uncovered, but have explained it in more of a um, coherent manner because the information has been so scattered, if you will, across the Internet. Mr. Garland, uh, Tupac's father, uh, recently posted on his uh, Facebook after seeing the video and posting the video that I did, the last video I did, Mr. Garland, Tupac's father, finally understands uh, that and he posted a uh, Reggie Wright Jr. betrayed my son and beneath that he also posted a copy of the facts uh, that was sent firing Reggie Wright Jr. on August 27th 1996 what's interesting about this is that you know there's been a lot of things said but I always like to leave it to um, the people who were there, you know, and most people were telling me that I left out the fact that um, the security was pulled off of Tupac that night um, deliberately. And it has always been a, a Reggie Wright Jr.'s um, explanation or his reasoning that he did not uh, pull the security off of Tupac from that perspective. But I'd like to uh, refer to. Uh, someone who had spoken and had an argument with uh, Reggie Wright Jr. Uh, that night. And it was no other than the security that was actually pulled off of Tupac that night. And him confirming that he was pulled off of Tupac. And also having a discussion uh, with Reggie Wright Jr. on how he disagreed with being pulled off of Tupac. Listen to Michael Moore. Uh, in Las Vegas prior to the fight starting, and I was asked, I was told that I'd be taken off of uh, Tupac's jury. You put Tupac at risk when you remove two body, one bodyguard and say, hey Frank, you handle him. So for most of the day, all this went on, and Tupac did not have a clue that's what we were doing. I was a little upset that I was taken off of him, and I got into a little argument with Reggie Wright at lunch over it. He said, Mike, I'm putting Frank back on him and I'm taking you back off. And I said, Reggie, that part doesn't make sense. Why not leave me and Frank on Tupac? And he said, Michael Moore, do what you're told. I'm gonna put you at Club 662 and you're gonna handle the security along with Al Giddens at the club. Beyond any shadow of a doubt, beyond any shadow of a doubt that Reggie Wright pulled security off of Tupac and what we, we, what a lot of people have been overlooking also is the fact that the reason why once again he pulled the security off of Tupac or Michael Moore mainly Michael Moore had a gun and you know if you listen to what Michael Moore just said he disagreed and thought it was um you know not a good idea but for some reason, Reggie Wright Jr. insisted and left only Frank. I want you to look at this picture right here. This picture 
this picture right here. This picture right here, when you look at the picture, you look, you see Frank looking back, basically, you know, trying to keep an eye on what's going on with Tupac. And basically, Frank's head is on a swivel and doing his job. Um, if you listen to Reggie Wright Jr.'s um, narrative around Frank, it was as if Frank failed Tupac. Uh, also, Reggie Wright Jr. had said that Frank failed to contact him. But what Reggie Wright Jr. failed to admit is that he had gave uh, a Kevin Hackey uh, Frank's radio, if you will. And in doing so, Frank wasn't able to actually uh, contact Reggie. But that is besides the point, because like I said, once again, Reggie Wright Jr. was supposed to know what was going on uh, with his whole entire business. But it seems that Reggie Wright Jr. was more concerned about. That's why I have to take some responsibility for what happened with my security with Tupac even though I wasn't even there. Didn't know what had happened or anything. But I was ultimately responsible for putting a, a fake ass with him. Versus a real dude that would have been there to advise correctly. Not saying that they would have stopped it because nobody could have stopped it. I know y'all believe so, but... Uh also, Reggie Wright Jr. had said that Frank failed to contact him. But what Reggie Wright Jr. failed to admit is that he had gave uh, a Kevin Hackey uh, Frank's radio, if you will. And in doing so, Frank wasn't able to actually uh, contact Reggie. But that is besides the point, because like I said, once again, Reggie Wright Jr. was supposed to know what was going on uh, with his whole entire business. But it seems that Reggie Wright Jr. was more concerned about pulling the security off of Tupac, at least Michael Moore, uh, for no reason at all. No reason at all. And just left Frank on uh, Tupac. The reason that was, was because the information had got back to Reggie. That and Reggie knew that Tupac was leaving death row. As much as that's why uh, Reggie Wright Jr. tries to defend the fact that, oh no, Pac wasn't leaving death row. He wasn't leaving death row. Because once again, if that truth is known as we know now from various people, right? Frank Alexander mainly um, after Tupac sent the letter. Remember, there would be no reason to lie about when the letter was received. You know, um, based on the fact that there was also an audit that Tupac wanted in and around the same time that the letter was received. Tupac wanted an audit, basically finding out the money that he was actually owed um, from record sales, what he had recouped versus what he owed. And he wanted all of those things. Right. So when you understand the Vegas situation and pulling the security, pulling Frank, I mean, I'm sorry, pulling Michael Moore off of Tupac, like Michael Moore said, and what he disagreed with, you understand why Frank was left on him. Reggie felt some kind of way about Frank and um, Tupac's uh, relationship with Frank and him liking Frank and trusting Frank from that perspective. So in your opinion, Frank Alexander was acting more like a groupie than he was a bodyguard for Tupac. That's what it appears now. Hmm. What, what it appears now. Is it true that Tupac asked for Frank Alexander after, you know, the way he handled the New York shooting with the dog pound? It's rumored that Tupac actually said, I want this guy to bodyguard me after the way, you know, Frank reacted quickly and, you know, promptly during the New York shooting. Is that true? It was rumbling, and, and word got back that he did a good job out there. But those Frank's words, I never heard those words before. But that's his words. And that being what it is, we know now that it got back to Reggie that, um, you know, 
Tupac had fired him. He was disgruntled. And he was, like I said, Frank was going to be on Tupac no matter what, based on the fact that, you know, um, yeah. Tupac told Frank that Frank was going to leave with him when he left death row. And Reggie knew that. And so what Reggie was trying to do is, you know, trying to make it look like, you know, he was still, uh, you know, Frank was still on him. According to Reggie, Reggie said, allegedly, Frank was on him in Vegas. If you listen very closely, allegedly, Frank was on him in Vegas, right? When, in fact, we see right here, Frank, in this picture, Frank head is on a swivel, if you will, if you will, doing his job trying to protect Tupac. Unfortunately, he couldn't do it alone. And what happened that night happened that night. But the most interesting part about this is the fact that Tupac's father, father, I'm sorry, uh, Billy Garland basically understands now from the last video that I did and putting it together, not with my words, but the words of Reggie Wright Jr. and all of the contradictions that Reggie Wright Jr. has made throughout the years in regards this, to this Tupac situation in Las Vegas um, and Reggie Wright Jr. doing a lot of talking about something that he was not there to witness and which he should have been there to witness. And like I said, once again, and Suge Knight asking him, you know, to send five more security guards and, and Reggie sent nobody. And that's the reason why if you, you, if you can understand what Michael Moore just said, Michael Moore just said, so, you know, you know, Michael Moore, do your job, do what I ask you to do, do right. So that just goes to show you, how adamant Reggie Wright Jr. was about not having Tupac adequately secured. He didn't care. Even to the um, disliking of Michael Moore himself. Like, no, why would you do that? Michael Moore said, you know, it's better if we have two people on Tupac. And Reggie told Michael Moore, according to Michael Moore, you know, do what you're told from that perspective. So as you can see, clearly, uh, Reggie Wright Jr. sabotaged Tupac's security. He betrayed Tupac. He betrayed Suge Knight. And and all of these years has been trying to um, create this narrative in which him and Tupac were friends and how the security was on him. And, 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 but, but, and this is the thing, how the security was on him in New York, right? And how Frank was on him in Vegas. I want you to and and see with that being said, I want you, I'm going to contrast those two situations, right? Reggie Wright Jr. has said, "Oh, well, why was if I was fired, why my security was on him in New York?" It's plain and simple. New York MTV Video Music Awards was an industry event. Suge was there. Yo, you know, you need to put the security on Tupac. This is not Tupac's personal time. This is Death Row. Um, record company, uh, professional business time, right? You go to Vegas, why is Frank the only one on him? And Reggie then pulls um, Michael Moore off of him, who Michael Moore was also on Tupac in New York at that particular time. And Michael Moore has said as much. He had been on Pac for the last couple of weeks, I believe it was, uh, because Frank was on vacation up until that time, right? When Frank came back, you know, in Vegas from that perspective, it's like, no. And other security guard officers in New York on Tupac at that particular time, in which we seen Tupac also had a radio. You know, um, if you remember the video with him and Snoop doing the interview, you know, he had like a little walkie-talkie. And so understanding that, you go to Vegas, how come Frank Alexander was the only one on Tupac in Vegas? Right? And you hear clearly Michael Moore will say that Reggie Wright Jr. told them not to carry guns. Listen. I went to school. Everyone in the room knew that we had just got back. Well, see, you can make this spooky because then in that meeting where everybody was told don't carry a gun yeah. anywhere. Now, wait, wait. Now, and that's the first time we've been in Vegas where somebody said we can't carry right. guns. That's right. And then they were really persistent about you not having one. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're going to be checking you. And then, and then he was even trying to convince the people with PCW not to carry. Right. Like they weren't going to give them courtesy up. Right. 
understand what I'm saying so so I don't know why all of these years Reggie Wright Jr. has been denying this this is not coming from people you know hearsay this is coming from somebody who was actually getting paid um to do their job and they're saying that yes it did happen now whether it happened for some kind of nefarious reason I don't know but if it didn't happen for a nefarious reason then why would Reggie Wright Jr. be denying it so much? We now know what that is. We now know that it was because of, before we knew, because Tupac had fired Reggie as his, his Reggie and his company as his personal security, and he was mad. And he was like, like I told y'all and showed y'all in the video, where he basically said, well, if he knew about the letter, you know, I would have been like, fuck that nigga. Well, he did know about the letter. But he lied about it and tried to say it can't. It was a letter, some letter that was sent in around June, which we know now is a lie also. So he's been lying all of this time. So much so, once again, point out the other lie. The other lie is, you know, um, the next tell radios. You know, but like I said, more importantly, as you've seen in the other video, um, Tupac's father, William Garland, has now come to the understanding with a very detailed and um, a detailed layout of the situation involving it because it was some things that he didn't know. It was some things, I'm sure if Afini was alive, may she rest in peace, that she would now understand differently than she, she did before from that perspective and what happened. And like I said, the ultimate, um, the ultimate situation is where she told him, you know, to send five more security guards in Vegas. And Reggie didn't send anybody. And Michael Moore saying this is proof of Reggie Wright Jr.'s true intentions. He sabotaged Tupac. He upended Tupac's security. He disobeyed a direct order from his boss, Shug Knight, whom was paying him um, handsomely, according to uh, Reggie Wright Jr., to protect Tupac Shakur and the other artists under the label. Reggie Wright Jr. gets no props. Uh, there is no um, uh, uh, admiration or anything like that. He failed. It was a dismal failure. And it was intentional. And it was deliberate. I just wanted to bring you this because, like I said, you know, it's interesting, you know, um, you know, Tupac's father coming out and actually, you know, finally uh, admitting that, that Reggie Wright Jr. betrayed my son. Your boy Del Rey, straight gang.